I am the spirit of London at night. I flicker with the will-o'-wisp gas lamps. I float like a spectre through the autumn fog. I see what the beady-eyed soot mice see. Silent armies staring up through dripping sewer grates. And I whisper with a voice full of secrets and sharp, shiny things. Glinting silver, spilling red, winding through cobblestone cracks. Sinewy arteries slithering out from a gnarled old heart, leading you down, down into Shoreditch and Whitechapel and Providence Row. Here is the city's oily belly, a foul-smelling swamp belching half-digested dreams. It is a magical place, a spooky place, my favorite place in the whole wide world. Here, the blackness is thick, and the shadows are twice as alive, and tenfold more wicked than anything you can see by the sterile light of day. And, of course, here, there be thieves, and whores, and vagabonds. Gods Here, in heaven. there be monsters. Take this beautiful fruit, for example. A werewolf. And a young thing want that. Tonight, he will join the dreadful beasts who make up London's midnight menagerie. Kill it before he kills us! Assuming he survives his welcoming party, graciously hosted by the aforementioned thieves and whores and vagabonds. Not the most original angry mob, is it? Or the most logical. Who owns a pitchfork in the middle of Bethnal Green? Logical or not, they look mad enough to tear the poor thing limb from the limb. But you have to admire their response time. No one fucks with the London East End. Oh look, that one's wielding knitting needles. Now there's an ovation. <sighs> Just try not to get yourself stupid, right? <laughs> Would you listen to that? London's finest finally decided to show up. Then you're already late. Stop walking and get down from there. Lighten up, Doctor. What if I stop and smell the lovely East End sewage now? Now! Fine! Fine! Make way, police coming through. Save us! Stop away from the beast, damn it! Kill the wolf! You bad man, move along! My baby! He ate my baby! Right then, lad. Hope you're not planning on putting up a fight. Oh, wait! Oh, I can explain everything! Let me guess. Lofty schemes, grand experiments, the best intentions gone away. Hm. There's only one place for you mad scientist type. Oh, oh no. P oh, oh pl please, no. Stop! You you don't understand. The formula. Something went wrong when I tried to repeat my results. It made me unstable. You've got to get away from me. I. What the devil? Look, I don't know what you are, how you got this way, but if you think some sparkly magic trick is going to get you out of this, then I've got some bad news for you. Jenkins, Whipple, restrain him. Ugh, l let me go. I've got to get back to my experiments. If if I don't feed them, they might. Hey, you what in the hell you think you're doing? This is strictly police business. You can't just... That's strange. Suddenly the air smells like peppermint. 
Good evening to you too, Constable Jenkins. It is so good to see you again. So good to hang on, I know that boys. You may indeed, sir, as we last spoke only this past Monday. By the by, I trust your holiday in Brighton went smoothly. Uh yes, it was right charming if you must know. Splendid. Now, Constable Whipple, how is your wife? Does she still volunteer at Trinity Hospital? Oh, indeed she does, sir. Oh, so glad to hear it. Last year's charity banquet would have done disastrous without her. And my dear Sergeant Brokenshire, did you decide to adopt that little terrier puppy you had your eyes on? Huh, <laughs> I did as a matter of fact. Did you decide on a name? Yup, little Ralphie. He's a right handful, that one. Dreadful sorry about the shutting early, sir. We do not know it was you. What the door brings you to this neck of the woods? Yeah, did you take a wrong turn at Buckingham Palace? Or were you perhaps off to discover a cure for consumption? <laughs> well, I hate to disappoint you, gentlemen. Mm. But I'm afraid I've come on a rather dull bit of business. You see, I was hoping I might have a conversation with a certain young gentleman. This young gentleman, as it were. Watch yourself, sir. Don't come any closer. Hmm? Why not? Haven't you heard? That thing is a furious lunatic! He doesn't look all that ferocious. Hmm, maybe not right now, but a few minutes ago, he was wrecking up the whole street. Yes, one of my associates informed me that there was a young werewolf loose on the streets. I came to offer my assistance. <laughs> Why, Doctor, were you thinking of raggling the beast single-handed? No, no, I would never dream to interfere with the work of the esteemed Metropolitan Police. I only thought to provide consultation where it was needed. You see, werewolves are supernatural creatures, and as such, they require specialized considerations. Well, well that might be, but our precinct hasn't got the time nor the funding to give special treatment to any man or beast or whatever it is. Yeah, they're a werewolf all demonic or something. It's a monster. It's got to be locked up, or it's a menace to the general public. Perhaps in fairy stories. But in truth, the werewolf is a noble and intelligent creature who can live quite harmoniously with humans. And while the halfpenny papers may enjoy resurrecting the one or two attacks from the last 50 years, the fact is that werewolves only attack humans when we threaten them first. Now, I don't mean to suggest that the good people of Bethnal Green look threatening. <coughs> But you can see how their hospitality might be... misinterpreted. Hmm. You weave a pretty theory, I'll grant you that. And maybe if our wolfy friend here were fucking off with the butterflies in some meadow somewhere, he'd be just fine. Well, this is London, for Christ's sake. If he goes on a rampage every time he's chalked by some passing straight urchin, we'll be hauling half of the East End out in body bags by year's end. These beasts could never be trusted out on the streets. Au contraire. Many supernatural creatures have already found quite a peaceable home right here in the city. With proper care, a werewolf could be just the same. Take, for instance... Oh, where have you gone? Aha! There's the little devil. Take, for instance, the common church Grimm. Some villagers still insist upon shooting these poor angels on sight, if you can believe it. I'm afraid they pay the price for our fear and superstition. Now, I know poltergeists can look a bit spooky, but once you get to know them... Ah! None of that, Zosi. Now, could you look at this little one in the eye and tell him you'd like to lock him up forever and ever? Well, now, on to a proper little... Wait a minute, I can't be bribed with puppies, Dr. Jim. Not even puppies with little stick-out tongues? Don't test me, sir. Look, even if your werewolf sprout rings in a ruddy halo, I still couldn't let him off the hook. The street doesn't just tear itself apart. Someone's got to pay. Not to worry, my good man. I would never think to speak such bold criticism without offering a solution. And what solution would that be? Well, firstly, I would see to it that poor... Pardon me, what did you say your name was, my friend? Ah, oh, Jasper, sir. Jasper Kayla. Thank you. I would see to it that poor Jasper here does not catch his death right here in the alleyway. Secondly, I will call in my associates to take care of all wolf-related damages to this neighbourhood. This, I assure you, will not cost your precinct a single shilling. Should you detect so much as one rubbish bin out of place, you may report your grievances to my society at this address. Finally, I will take personal responsibility for this young man. 
With God as my witness, I guarantee that this werewolf shall be fully reintegrated into society by the end of this month. Ugh, I don't know. This isn't a huge way of things. I can't imagine the Commissioner will be too happy. Won't he? Then he can bring it up with me directly. We're having dinner this, uh... Wednesday. <laughs> Seems like I'm over my head on this one. You go a bit scary sometimes, you know that. Am I? What on earth do you mean? Well, let's just say you never failed to. Thief! Thief! Oh, hell. That's our cue. I'll leave it to you then, Doctor. Splendid. I am most indebted to you all. Don't thank us just yet. I'll be back for an inspection soon enough. I'd expect no less. Well, that's one way to start a morning. Now, would you care for a spot of tea? Er, yeah, I mean, n no. It's real nice of you, sir, but I need to get back home. What's left of it, anyway? We can stop by on the way. I hate to insist, but I doubt those officers will be too keen to find you loose on the streets. There's also a reasonable chance the locals will try to burn you alive. After you, Mr. Kalok. Is something wrong? It's just... I don't normally get into carriages with strange people. No, not, not that you're strange. You've been fantastic swooping in and saving me like that. But I mean, I don't even know your name. Oh, my apologies. I forgot all about doing introductions. I am Dr. Henry Jekyll, at your service. Who is this mysterious Prince Charming? Where did he come from? What does he want? I mean, I know the answer to these questions. Night spirits know lots of things. <clears throat> anyway, find out in the next thrilling installment of The Glass Scientist. <laughs>